Hey, Ima. Hey, Sebastian, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me too? Yes, I can. Okay, so um, finally, we've been able to make this uh, meeting possible. Yes, and I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I've been very busy with uh, mother trainings too, and. Um, Okay, no yes, worries. Yes, yes. Um, aside the Six Sigma, I do PMP training as well. So, okay, yes, I see. Yes, is that an independent consultant or? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But um, I most often than not with the Six Sigma, I do mm -hmm. it with one um, guy in Accra. So, um, aside my own, then I also run one with him. So he has his own consulting firm and then does invite me um, when there are trainings, aside mm. the ones I also do. But with the uh, project management professional training, that's my personal thing that, okay. I, yeah, I do. Mm. So, um, so we usually uh, uh, kind of engage different consultants at GIZ for this different kind of training so oh will, okay okay yeah. okay we do, we do that a lot so i'll keep you i'll keep you in mind if you are sure ready. sure 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 why not why not so um coincidentally i also did the um i don't know are you doing the um lean six sigma aspect master's program so mine is the this thing um the um, digital Digital project manager. It's a master's course. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. EMP, Discam, and some other digital transformation. A lot of those. Oh, things. that that's great. That's great yeah. because um, I I think about um, three years or or so, three years or four years ago, that was when okay. I took the uh, um, yes, I think it was three years and four years ago, 2016. Mm -hmm. I took the uh, um, master's program in Lean Six Sigma. Ah, okay. Yes. So the. Well, then that would be key because uh, this this is just like a, a little piece that they has been added to the master's course. But if your master's was basically like yes, 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 it was it was um, strictly Six Sigma. So it had um, the green belt, black belt. Um, um, application in healthcare IT, and then there was also the project management professional um, training program as well, mm -hmm. and then other other um, courses. So I think it was for one year. Yes, it was very intensive for one year. Mm -hmm. And um, the this is one of the projects that I also chose to do because my master's dissertation was on quality management in healthcare. So okay. I decided to um, just go the healthcare line and then, um, mm. yes. So increasing um, hospital POS collections, okay. Mm. So um, let, uh, you've, you've read through, right? Yes, I have. Okay, so have you, have you done the entire um, Greenbelt course or um, you just saw it um, and then you wanted to start before you. you so I, I've gone through the self, um, the, the self paid, yes, courses that uh, uh, I understand uh, majority of it, but uh, not not everything. Uh, okay, okay, it's not, okay. It's not easy for me to. Okay. Get this project done soon. Mm -hmm. So, what's your background? So my background is in uh, economics and development planning. Oh, okay, okay, that's great, that's great. Yeah. So, um, taking that your background is a cons, then you have a strong math background, and yes, that, yes, yes, yes. So um, the statistics in here wouldn't be uh, much of a problem. And mm. it's when you are taking the green belt course, uh, like the exams, you want to take the exam that um, the statistics is quite some way, but then uh, once you are my math um, oriented, I mean, you wouldn't yeah. have any problem at all. So okay. the basically, like, you know, Six Sigma 
um, that the make process or methodology, let me put it that way, is to improve an existing product or system or process. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the um, design for Six Sigma is for a new product or a new service. Okay, so if we look at this um, case that we have here, we would want to increase the hospital's POS collections. And then the brief introduction there about the whole thing is more about the fact that there are processes for the payment of the um, POS, okay? And mm -hmm. um, what they want to do is that they want to take the POS payment within a certain number of days. Otherwise, it makes collection very difficult. And once it is very difficult to collect the um, funds, then the hospital, of course, would be running at a loss. You see? Right. Good. So basically, that is um, what this is about. And I'm sure you have gone through it. So I wouldn't bother you so much with going through the reading. But we've been mm. giving the data. OK, we've been giving the data. And if you can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Yes, so I highlighted some of the things that are key over here. So the red here says that increasing the POS reduces bad debt, provides a better cash position, reduces expenses, and then increases patient satisfaction when connected um, conducted properly. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, what it means is that once we are able to increase the POS, then these are the benefits that we are going to get from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been given the metric and how it is calculated. For this project, we are not so much interested in it. What we are interested in is what we have been asked to do. It's more like okay. it has been done and then um, the data has been collected. And as a Lean Six Sigma professional, what can you do to help them? So typically, if you look at the um, whole setup, there's some defined phase there, and then there's some measurement um, phase, you know, where they are taking data, uh, measuring the system and all that. For instance, mm -hmm. is that um, the HHS has de identified the industry median benchmark for POS as 13.6%. And the top 10% POS benchmark as 41.4%. Mm. However, DS now is 35.6%. That is way higher than the industry mm. median. Okay. Mm. So the thing here is that do you, we want to reduce this particular percentage to something either 13.6%. That is if we are being too, um, how do you call it, um, overly, um, how do you call it, um, um, how do you call it, overly, I don't know how to even put it, optimistic, or optimistic exactly, okay. Now, the top 10% benchmark is 41.4, so mm -hmm. at least, with a 35.6, it's kind of within the top 10, but that is not what they want. So they have decided that they would want to reduce this by 5%, okay? So it says that, and then the executive has determined that a 5% point increase is what needed to stay competitive. In other words, they want to be around 40.6%. Um, so this mm -hmm. is their target, okay? So now the data they collected is what we have here, the table one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the facilities are here, the payments that have been given, um, the, all the payment, um, patient payment, the POS percentage, and then the centralized teams. Now, coming to um, this part, it says that the team identified the facilities with POS, um, above the target and research the activities 
they have in place, hoping to find commonalities or key drivers. So these drivers are stated here. That when at the end of the day, you would want to as a consultant to um, either strengthen some of the um, activities or processes, okay? Then these are the things that they identified and then you would want to do that. But mm. going back to this particular question, okay? We have been asked one simple thing that first of all, we should use the data given in table two to determine if the performance is stable using a control chart. Okay, now mm -hmm. process stability is basically trying to say that we want to see if we can predict this process. Okay, it's all about being able to predict the process. Mm -hmm. We want to minimize um, inconsistencies as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, the exercise here is to use the table two. So this is table two, POS payment, and then all patient payment mm -hmm. to do that. So we're going to draw a um, control chart, but that one you would need Minitab. Do you have Minitab? Yes, I do. Very good. So once you have Minitab, then you don't want to um, perform that. But the question is, what type of control chart are you going to use? There are a lot of them, okay? Mm -hmm. First of all, the question is, the data that you have, is it continuous data or it is um, categorical data, okay? Mm -hmm. If it is attribute or categorical data, there's a way we do it. There's a particular control chart for that. But if it is continuous, then we are going to use a different control chart. Okay, so we want mm. to do that. So I'm going to um, share my screen with you. Okay, what I did, and then I'll take you through how you can use the mini tab to do that. So let me stop okay. sharing this one now and then share what I did with you. Yeah. Okay, can you see my screen now? It's loading. Okay. Okay, see you now. Yeah, you can see it now, right? Yes. Okay, so with this one, we want to check the stability of the process. The first thing we have to do is to check whether the data we have is normal or not. Okay, okay. yes, so before we check for process stability, we must check for normal, normality, okay? You can use the normal um, histogram to check, to see whether you get the bell shape as you can see here, okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Otherwise, there is a probability plot of the POS payment, which is also testing for normality, okay? So this is what we have here. Now, this one is more of a hypothesis test, okay? So you see that we have a 95% confidence interval, okay? Mm. Now, you see the p-value here is 0 0.677, mm -hmm. okay? And our alpha value definitely will be 0 0.05. Now, if 0 0.05 is our alpha value and p is 0 0.67, then P is greater than the alpha. So we'll fail to reject, as I noted, we'll fail mm -hmm. to reject the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis here is that it is what? Normal. Normal. Mm -hmm. Good. So we have tested for normality, okay? And usually we use what we call the anderson darling test. So this is the anderson darling test that is testing for normality for POS payment or collections. Mm. Good. Now, one we, once we are done, 
Then we're going to look at the control chart. You see here, we have the individual moving range chart of POS payment. Mm -hmm. Now the individual moving range chart, you see when the um, data given, for instance, if you look at um, the question that we're given, if you have the question there, the table two, you see that the interval between them, okay, we have individual, it's not a matter of subgroups. Mm. Okay, yes, so the POS and payment are individual payment that have been collected. Do you get it here? And that is right. how come, I, that very good, we did not subgroup them. If they were subgrouped, then we're not going to use the individual moving range chart. Uh, okay. Mm. Yes, so that is why we are using the individual moving range chart. Mm. There's a calculation for that, but you don't need it. Yours is to use, be able to use the mini tab to do it. So mm. you see, it will give you the average, which is here. Let me try and then maximize this. So this is the average over here. And then we have the lower control limit and then the upper control limit, which is um, three standard deviations up and down. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Then we have the moving range. The moving range is also um, calculated by taking the interval between the first and then the immediate one after that. So that one has also mm -hmm. given us the um, control chart. But you can see that with this one, the moving range, there's one item that is between September 14th and November 14th, there's one item that is on the lower control limit. Have you seen mm. it? Yes, yeah. the, yes, there's one item that is on the lower control limit. So then I had to also look at because we are looking at um, patient payment, okay, and then the uh, POS according to the table. We also want to look at that of patient payment, okay. Mm -hmm. We did that and we've seen that it is almost like the other one. So you can see that this one over here, it is within the control limit, okay. But if we mm -hmm. come to the moving range, there right. is. Yes, you see that there are two points that mm -hmm. are there. So there's a little bit of a question mark on the stability of the process. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And if you look at the curve here, you see the dots or the points are plotted and are random. Okay, but mm -hmm. within this particular region, there seems to be a certain pattern. Or is it like it is dropping and then it stabilized for a bit and then came. So that even though it is within the control limit, we also check for patterns within the data that we have plotted. Mm. Okay, and then ask ourselves some questions. So now I said that the individual value plot of the chart suggests that the POS is stable with time for this. However, the moving range suggests some variations in the process. Specifically, the MR chart for POS um, payment reveals an out of control process for the month of October, as the point lies on the lower control limit. Mm. Furthermore, the chart reveals that there was a sharp rise in the average MR for the month of December. Okay, so if you, um, that was for the, POS payment, okay? So you see, I'm trying to explain what I see there. And mm. then based on that, we can make some deductions. So I said that because of that sharp rise in the average MR for the month of December. Mm. Let me go to that one. For the month of December, then we should investigate what actually happened. Do you get it here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, then the final point I made here is that the chart for patient payment indicated an out of control process for the month February 15th and then December 15th. 
Okay, so you look at, you see, February 15th and then December 15th, as mm -hmm. it can be seen here. Good. Now, why did I use the MR, um, IMR chart? It's because it is mostly suitable for data that is continuous with a subgroup size of one. Okay. You get it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here you have done the, um, you have checked for stability. That is the first one, okay? And we do process stability checks in the measure phase. Okay. Yes, in the measure phase, that is where we do the stability check. You do your measurement system analysis, you do the process capability analysis. In fact, after you have done the um, stability check, it does not mean the process is capable, okay? Stability only means that the process can be predicted. Okay. Mm -hmm. But as to whether over a certain period of time it will continue to give what the customer wants is where mm -hmm. we ask using the capability analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this question did not ask us for any capability analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then here we are asked for scope what opportunity. opportunity. So Yes, that's the exercise two, if you have the question there. Mm, yeah. yes. so reading the case, I said from the case, the current performance is um, 35 points, and then by the judgment of the executive, a 5% point increase will significantly position the hospital to stay competitive. That is it. Now, as indicated in the table, seven um, facilities have POS above the targeted 40.6. Therefore, I would set those facilities with POS above the target as the control group. Okay, while I investigate the remaining facilities. Mm -hmm. You see, because you would want to find out why some facilities are performing, others are not performing. Oh, right. Exactly. So when you put them as your control group, you would want to investigate what is getting them to perform. And then you are also looking at the other side, what is getting them not to perform. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know that in research, most of the time when we keep uh, a control group, we also try not to let them interfere with the um, research group, the group that we want to perform our mm -hmm. research on. Right. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So that is why I decided to do that. Now, then now I would conduct perform hypothesis testing to ascertain whether the facilities with POS above um, target have centralized teams or not. If you look at the data given, you see that we had um, centralized teams and then those without centralized teams. Okay, going further, when I performed the um, correlation and the ANOVA test, there was a strong relationship, sorry, um, there was a significant relationship between centralized team and then POS collections. Okay, so in that case, is it because there are centralized teams? That is why um, they are doing well or not. So that is what I said I would do. So I would conduct hypothesis testing to ascertain whether the facilities with POS above the target have centralized teams or not. Okay, so I will test whether there is an association between centralized teams and then POS question. Now, if there is, the question is, is it statistically significant? Okay, after I have indicated that it is statistically significant, as an economist, you know that um, statistical significance does not necessarily mean that it is what practically significant. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So for that one, we would want to determine that. Now, this is where we do the testing. Now, at this testing of theory, okay, is done in the analyze phase the hypothesis testing, okay, okay, is done in the analyze phase because in the analyze phase, you'd want to first of all, do what we call exploratory data analysis. You want to find out the cause of the variation within the process. 
the measure phase tested the measurement system that you were um, using, whether the variations that you were using, um, you, are, you are identifying are from the measurement system, whether they are from the operators or whether it is from the parts that you are using themselves. Okay, mm. yes, that is why you conduct the measurement system analysis. Then you do the capability check to see whether your process is capable. Now, once you have done that, you come to the analyze phase to now investigate the variations, whether it is a positional variation, whether it is cyclical, or whether it is a temporal variation. Okay, mm. after you have done those variations, then those checks to see, then you can also do what we call the correlation analysis, okay, to see whether there's some association. All you are trying to do is that you want to narrow down to the main cause of the problem. Right. Mm. That is why you do those hypothesis testing and all that. So once you've been able to ascertain all these, then in the improved phase, you know that you have narrowed the excess that influence the, the why that you want to tackle mm. okay because the whole thing is that there's a cause and then there's a an effect so what are the causes to the problem we have seen a lot of them but what are the key ones so the analyze phase helps us to do that and then with the improve phase when we try to use the, the design of experiment we try as much as possible to give the best um, possible scenarios for optimization and all that. So mm. here, we want to check if centralized teams impact POS collections, okay? So this is um, the individual value plot of POS versus centralized teams. So I did a one-way ANOVA, okay? And mm. then it showed here, you see, whether there's a centralized team or whether there's no centralized team, okay? And then mm -hmm. it shows the average and the difference between the two of them. Okay. You see that where the, the centralized teams, the main average is over here. Is that not it? Mm -hmm. And then where there are no um, centralized teams, the main average is here. So mm -hmm. it is telling us something. Okay. So it means that the two of them are not the same. Then we look at, okay, main effect plot for POS. For main effect plot, we are trying to look at the influence these, whether there's a centralized team or whether there's no centralized team, okay? Mm -hmm. That influence on POS. So the main effect, what we are looking at here is POS. And those that go into this, so it's like our uh, Y will be the POS collection okay and then mm -hmm. our x's will be the no and then the yes okay so you see that there's a significant difference between Sorry. the two of them have you seen it here mm -hmm. yes there's a significant difference between them so indeed it is even showing us that um centralized teams to a very large extent impact POS collection. Have you seen it? Mm. Yes, from the means here. Right. So then I performed a correlation test. Okay. Now, the correlation test here, if I'm moving too fast, let me know so that I can slow down. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if, so for this one, correlation test, you know, Pearson correlation um, coefficient R. If it is equal to zero, it means that there's no correlation. Mm. Okay, but if it is not equal to zero, it means that there's a correlation. It can be strong or it can be weak. Okay, now when I mm. did that, you see, going back to the data we we're given, the centralized team was yes, no, yes, no, if you, if you could see that. And when you are doing a um, correlation test, you're going to use, um, continuous data, okay? So once you try to do correlation test, it won't work unless you code. That is why I have piercing correlation of what? 
centralized teams coded. So mm. my code was that zero was for no and one was for yes. Okay. Mm. So it enabled me to perform the correlation test and that it showed that there was an association between them. So you could see clearly that it was a weak association. Mm. Okay. And it was a negative association. You get it's a negative sign here means right. that as one increases, the other decreases. Okay, decreases, yeah. good. An then, inverse. yeah, exactly. There's an inverse relationship. Then we could see a p a p value of zero point zero four. Okay, with a p value of zero point zero four, it is less than our alpha of zero point zero five. So then we'll say that it is statistically significant. Uh -huh. So this is the explanation here. A piercing correlation R negative 0.331 implies there's a weak negative correlation between centralized teams and POS collection. P value of 0 0.4 indicates that it is this association is statistically significant, and so we reject the null hypothesis of no correlation. Okay. Now, so this is the um when I was doing the, so you know, you want to know whether it impacts it. So there has to be an association. But sometimes we know that whether there's an association or correlation does not necessarily mean that um, there, there's a causation. Okay. Mm. So I did um, a simple linear regression. Okay. And okay. then, yes that gave us that regression model that POS payment is equal to this particular formula. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope you can see it. Yes, I can see it. Yeah. Good. And it gave us the R square of 10.9%. R square mm -hmm. is telling us what percentage of the variation in the data. Okay can be explained by our model. So it means that our model can explain up to 10% of the data. It means, mm. yes, it's not so strong a model, but of course, um, at least we've been able to come out with something. We've seen that there's a certain relationship in there. Okay, mm. good. So whenever you do a regression analysis, it automatically comes with an analysis of variance, okay? And so the values that we see here are those that are repeated, okay? So basically, mm. from what we see, it means that um, centralized teams do impact what um, the POS collection, okay? Mm. Then question four was asking us that we should look at affinity groups or something. Is that not it? Uh, it's a based on the information provider. What could be the aff affinity categories for the key drivers that impact? Yes. Uh, so, so going back to the um, preamble that we were given, the case study, it gave us mm -hmm. certain categories. So I looked at the patient's education, the policies, and then the POS collection systems, okay? Um, when the patient are educated well enough, they will know um, what to do is expected of them. And then of course, it will, it will make things better. The type of policies that are put in place will also um, make sure that things are better. And then the collection system is a, this is a problem with a collection system. So here, you see, when we are doing measurement system analysis, this is what we are going to measure, the POS collection system. Okay, mm. yes. So these are the affinity categories based on what um, the question said. But I'm sure that if you go through it, you may also get other um, affinity categories. Mm. Okay. Yes, I always say that most of the time we see things based on our backgrounds. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. With an econ's background, you see things different from somebody who has a pure um, science background. 
You get mm. it. So basically, this is what they expect from you. And once it is a project, this is not a correct or wrong thing. They want to see how best you understand the course, okay? Mm. How you're able to use the um, tools. The application of the exactly, knowledge. exactly. And then definitely when you submit it, they will get back to you with their feedback and then mm. help you out. So basically yeah. that that is that is it. That is that is it. I hope you are very familiar with the usage of um, Minitab. Yes. So uh, I've tried it on the uh, basic projects that uh, they okay. give us already. That, that's great. So. That's great. That's great. So I'm sure with this at least you get the overview and then you know um, how yes, to yes. go about it. Mm. About it. Mm. Wow, so, this this is so helpful. Very, very yeah, helpful. yeah, yeah. So so that is that is it. So when are you wow. supposed to submit it? Uh it's open, it's not um Yes, yes. Yes. So I was uh I was struggling with both the scrum and this one. Okay. But I've not been able to do the scrum. Okay, that's good. That's good. And a lot more. Sometimes if you depend on only the self um Learning uh, the self yeah, yeah. Because they are short, short videos, and they don't go into too much. They don't, they don't, they don't really go into too much details. Mm. They don't really no. go into too much details. And I don't usually have time to join the live, live class. Yeah, because of the time difference. Mm. Yes, because so. um, if if I can tell, I remember um, if they are Indian. Um, instructors or facilitators they use the mumbai time and they are five hours 30 minutes or so ahead of us ahead of, mm. uh, yeah so so i remember those times i had to sometimes adorn join them and all that mm. and then the good thing is that they record the sessions okay mm, yeah, they yes they record mm. the sessions but um it's still it's not easy that one is not easy mm. It's not easy. So, so basically, that is that. So this is, is the this is the only project that I'm left with. To oh, okay, 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 okay. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. So, in that case, now that you have a fair idea of it, you yeah. you 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 start right. Yes, yes you definitely. Start, you yeah. start. You start. You start. I'm sure you. You are also jotting down point, so yes, I, I jotted down some points. Okay, okay, but in case you have any um, challenges, I'm always there. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm always there, right. and then I would definitely give you the needed um, direction. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Thanks so much. Uh, You're so welcome. Much You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, so. I hope I can... mm -hmm. I'm saying I hope I can uh, pay you back sometime. Oh, uh, Charlie, what are friends for? Yeah. You know, once in one, well, by all means, one day we'll meet somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, so now wait. I know. Yes, yes. So we'll find yeah. time. If you mm -hmm. want to do the Six Sigma proper, like one day you want to take the exams or something, I'm, I'm around. I can just take you through. Mm -hmm. Mm, okay. I've been, I've been, I'm, I've trained green belt, black belt. I think class two or three weeks ago, I was in Accra. I, I am in Akusumbu, so. Oh, okay. But my family yeah. is in Accra, so oh. every weekend, um, I'm in Accra, okay. so I come mm. and I usually do the trainings. So last, okay. our last two weeks or so, I was in Accra on Thursday for um, a green belt training with um, mm. blue skies. Is it blue sky oh, okay. the, yes and then mm -hmm. um i think before the, the area. yes yes so and around um i think before the COVID, well, there was also another session with um, those from um, wilma ghana vodafone and other mm -hmm. other groups, yes and uh, they, they've been doing well they've been they've been passing so i have some um, three or four black belts that I have trained that passed, and then okay. last year uh -huh. a team from the same blue skies they came, we trained them for the green belt, and that the entire class passed, 
And so that got the company to say that we we'll need to send another set. Mm. Yes. So so we are we are because they, they need this knowledge a lot. <laughs> oh, seriously speaking, you see it, it changes the way you think in the organization. You see things mm. differently. Exactly. Yeah. And if you are fortunate to have a manager who has this orientation and mm. then you do things like that, I mean you become a hot cake. That is right. it. That is it. That is it. Okay. So All right. I'll leave you here. I recorded the session, so in case of anything, I can share with you. Okay. Okay. When okay. you need it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So go. Thank we'll you so much. You. And I appreciate okay. your time. Okay. okay. We'll keep in touch. Sure. Sure. Thank sure. You. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.